the stalker modding community is just going in Sano mode now. Uh, open world survival horror has multiple different games within its genre, and I cannot name one game. I can't even name a generic AAA game right now in the realistic shooter broad genre that is as good of an experience as Stalker Gamma. And I get it, the Stalker community is sometimes upset at me for only covering Gamma and not covering the other mod packs that exist. And there's tons of mod packs that join all these different creators' ideas together into their own sort of themes, but I just happened to cross Gamma first. And I think that if the Stalker community took a step back from rivalries between mod packs and thinking that even I am sponsored by Grok to play Stalker Gamma, just take a seat back and look what you've done. You've made something pretty cool, and you've made it for free, and it rivals every AAA shooter out there in a lot of different aspects. People from all over, people who didn't agree with each other originally, but now do, putting things together to make something unique that works. It's cool. Every now and then, Stalker Gamma gets a big update. There's tons of different updates in the changelog here. Lots of different things that make small changes and lots of different things that make big changes. And in today's episode, we're gonna be talking about Point Nine, the newest update for Stalker Gamma, from my perspective of playing the update for about 10 hours now. Point Nine is just dumb. Uh, there is brand new weapon animations that look better than most AAA games that I've been playing recently. There's a task grabber mechanism so that in a big city like Rostock, for example, it, there's a lot of stalkers that you can get missions from, and now you can just open up your little tablet and grab missions from inside of your PDA, kind of like a little Craigslist jobs thing. Because I, I used to not do quests simply because I had to go to every single person and ask them. Now it's just like I've got a I've got like an Amazon Prime shipping for my quests that I can just boom. And then you can complete those tasks and then come back and get your reward by manually physically going up to the person. It's nice because then you don't have to find the stalkers that are hiding in the corners of a city for a good quest that's easy to do. And you can read all the quests all in one location, like next to a campfire while you're cooking some food. It's very, very nice. It, one of the best improvements I've ever seen to a game like this. There's also a very immersive feeling whenever the game looks better than most games out today. The graphics improvements, the sound improvements, how? How? <laughs> Dude. How? Emissions. Holy shit. Damn, dude. Wonderful sound design. Psy Storms. Sunrises and sunsets and foggy mornings. This game has the aesthetic just down. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but a 2007 engine is looking better than a lot of games that are coming out nowadays. There are some places where the old graphics definitely catch up to the experience where old models and, and trees that are made out of two polygons kind of pop into that aesthetic look. But it's just crazy to play a game that's this old that looks this good, and I'm really just enjoying that experience. There's also something that's entirely more immersive, dynamic loot, loot that is actually hidden in different areas of the map, uh, kind of similar to the feeling of DayZ. Whenever you walk into a house and there's loot on the shelves, there is thousands of loot spawns all over the map on boxes, tables, chairs, shelves, anywhere in a house. Usually if you see any man-made object like a car or a box or a piece of concrete, go and check the top of it. There's a solid chance that some piece of loot will spawn there and it can be anything from a barrel for a Glock to a piece of cloth used for repairing your armor. It's very, very cool. It adds a kind of nice level of soft RNG to the game because you never really get anything that's too crazy out of these just loot spawns on the world. But I find that these are very nice in helping me kind of fill my inventory with a good mixture of items to craft new parts and uh, upgrade my, my suit and weapons to a better extent. Also, auto loot. This is a 
interesting part of the looting process, where if you come across a dead body, for example, uh, usually you would have to go through every single piece of loot on their body. Well, now you can actually configure a little program that grabs the loot that you want, disassembles the parts of guns that you want, and it's just... This is dumb. A, a big problem that a lot of people have with the Gamma experience is because it's based on heavily r r reliant on crafting and finding resources and scrounging up different little pieces of loot to build things that are bigger, which is, in my opinion, really cool and fun. A lot of people don't like that. And at the very beginning of my Stalker Anomaly playthrough, I thought the looting and crafting system was a bit too complex myself. So I kind of get where they're coming from. Auto looting brings in a kind of patch for that, a helper that helps you gather things that you probably should want and keeps things that you don't want out of your inventory, like a piece of uniform that doesn't have any quality cloths in it that you could tear apart for repairing another one. It automatically disassembles useless parts like radios or powder cans, things like that that I never even disassembled before because I just didn't know that you could do that. I would just sell them. <laughs> so it's nice to know that a powder can contains gunpowder. I don't know what I thought I was before, just a can of powder. But here I am probably 400 hours into my stalker playthroughs altogether and I'm just now learning that, yeah, you can disassemble some items in the game. Maybe there should be an auto looter after all. <laughs> See, that's what's interesting about this fight. I don't remember if controllers used to make your rifle start to try to kill you immediately as they made line of sight. I thought it was once they hit you a few times with their little psi attacks. But that's what's interesting about Gamma, is that things change all the time, and, and these stalker mods are constantly updated, and when you have so many mods from so many different creators, you constantly have an ever-changing experience in the zone. And it makes the zone fresh. Every single time you come back for another playthrough every few months, something new is different. Something has changed, and it makes the zone feel so much more alive than playing its static counterparts like the original games. Dude, if I died in my Iron Man run to that, I would have been so mad. I, like, that's, that's like a new, per yeah. That's like a new permanent scare. Shit! Whoa! Okay, you weren't there last time. No, 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 no. It's just such a unique experience and such a unique game that I like it. I like this, and I understand there's other mod packs, there's other experiences, there's custom modding that I could do in Stalker to make my anomaly experience probably better in most people's eyes, but I like the simplicity. I like sitting down and having a convenient pack that I can just click to install and boom bam bop I've got everything ready to go. And I appreciate that I can go to the Discord and see change logs happening every 12 hours after a launch of an update. Grok or someone in his team is doing something to improve the game. And that reminds me of the good old days when games used to have those constant solid improvements coming out for them, especially games within this genre. And right now while we're in this kind of content drought in terms of realistic shooters and survival and horror shooters alike, I just feel like this is such a refreshing glass of cider compared to the tap water that other people are covering these days. So to conclude the video, I guess, if you're interested in Stalker Gamma, um, I definitely don't suggest playing it first. I know this is the big flash experience that I always talk about on the channel, but uh, I definitely would suggest if you're interested in the open world Stalker gameplay, going and playing Anomaly first. It's a simpler, easier experience to ease you into the open world aspect, and maybe once you've played that after a while, you can check out the main games for their story and Stalker Gamma for that more hardcore, complex, and absolutely beautiful experience. A bit of a repetitive video, I know. I know I already like this game. I know you know that I like this game, but I hope that this video kind of sheds a bit of light on a game that you might not have heard of yet.